Hi, I'm Kathy Crendel, President of Otterbein University. I want to welcome everyone to today's um, edition of Otterbein Spotlight. Today we're focusing on our alumni involvement in Otterbein. We've talked a lot about our curriculum, we've talked a lot about our student experiences over the last few editions of this, uh, but today we're going to focus on the way in which our alumni really serve, continue to be involved in the life of the community and the life of Otterbein. Many of our alumni touch our students' lives in many kinds of ways. So we're going to talk about various aspects of that today along with some of our faculty and alumni and outside um, supporters of Otterbein as they serve different dimensions and are involved in different ways in the life of our community at Otterbein. So um, for today, my guests are uh, Candy Canzaneri, and Candy is a professor in our Department of English, um, teaches on a regular basis for us, and she's been um, a great source of support. And Candy um, traditionally teaches courses that tend to attract a number of our senior uh, members of our community, and these tend to be alumni who come back, and there's a senior program that allow um, our, our guests from the community to participate in classes. Um, they can sit in on classes at no, at no tuition cost. So Candy's going to be talking about her experiences there. Marge Trent is here, um, and I, I jokingly said to Marge before we started that she does everything. I think uh, Marge has been a member of the Alumni Council. She has been on the Library Committee. She's um, a strong supporter of our theater program. I think she's been known to do things like impersonations of folks to raise money for yes. various activities. So <laughs> um, she kind of does it all, um, is a regular attendee at our Cardinal Migration. Mm -hmm. So um, just a great supporter, um, always there for um, activities, supporting our students and supporting our community. So um, we're going to begin um, with a, a conversation with them, and then we'll engage some other guests um, later on in the program. So, um, Candy, I, I said something to someone yesterday. I was doing a conversation with some faculty, and one of them said that um, one of her favorite aspects of teaching at Audubon is the senior program because she gets so much experience and um, focus and I guess also perspective um, from some of the seniors who sit in on our classes. And I always joke that you have a bunch of groupies. I, I, my, <laughs> yes, my fan base, my, uh, or as I call them, the usual suspects. The usual suspects. So talk to us about, from a faculty perspective, how does that change the, the teaching and learning environment? Uh, it changes it. It's a very positive change. I truly believe I was fortunate when I was in college to uh, have some older classmates and uh, one of whom was 89 and I've always thought it was a wonderful thing and uh, the cross pollination of, of generations has been really something I've enjoyed. Now the one course I remember, I hope I have this right, someone mentioned to me that um, there was a course on the literature from the World War II period and some of the seniors in the class had actually lived through that period. Um, yeah, they, they, I did a course on screwball comedy and then I had a satire course and I did uh, one called Discovering Our Meaning that had a lot of the, the uh, World War II, you know, post-World War II things. And uh, the students learn. Uh, they realize that, you know, they, have, they get a little extra context, which is wonderful. And, and they have been very welcoming. I see no, you know, there's no awkwardness at all. Great. Well, it's good to, good to have you here. Oh, well, thank you. And we'll come back to some more questions. But Marge, um, I gave a little bit of a catalog of your activities, but how many different kinds of ways have you been involved in the life of Otterbein? It's countless. <laughs> I, I would look back and uh, when I retired, which was uh, not that long ago, but uh, Dean Van said, you've got to get involved, get on campus, get back to work. And it just seemed as though that was Friends of the Library, and I got active there. And then uh, when I was in school, I was so involved in the music and going to the theater and all that uh, it just seemed like a natural to stay involved in that area, too. So let me ask you specifically, um, one of the things I mentioned was the Cardinal Migration. Explain what that is. That's something that some of our alumni and friends might want to hear about, and then we'll talk more about some of your other activities. But right. give a 30-second summary of the Cardinal Migration. Well, 30-second worth is in 1994, we decided that we could take the alumni event off campus because everything had always been centered right here. Mm -hmm to different parts of the United States, and we would start with an area that had what we called a pod of graduates. So we went to Monterey, California, and the idea was to take 
the college there because there were some people that had, had not been back to campus in 40, 50 years, mm -hmm. and we wanted to interest them to come back as well. And Dean Van and Marilyn Day used to, to run this, is that yes, correct? Yes, this okay. is true. They put the fire under us that <laughs> this was going to happen and we should get on board. Okay, and now Becky Smith has inherited that whole She has. Whole she tradition. has the fire now. Okay. <laughs> So, um, and I, you know, the cardinal migration, I, I love it when it's in the winter and it takes place in a warm place, which, um, so yes. as cardinals, I don't know if cardinals actually migrate, but anyway, um, our version of the cardinal migration is to go to a fun place uh, where we have a core of some alumni, some local folks who help to organize this, and then what would we have this year, 60, 70 60 people? 60-some, and um, I think it, it, what is good is there are always new people, and then there's a core who have been there since 1994 mm -hmm. that just can't resist getting back. So that's kind of another aspect of our community is the way in which alumni stay engaged. But, well, let me come back to Candy for a second and ask you about um, what's your favorite class when you have some of these um, citizens, alumni, seniors in your, in your class? What well, I think the one that we all enjoyed the most was Screwball Comedy, which is the, the, the films of the 1930s, first part of the 1940s. And uh, uh, everybody seemed to have a good time in that one. We've had the, you know, they loved the old stars. And of course, they had seen them, some of them, right. when they came out at the movie theaters. And the, um, the traditional undergraduate students at that time didn't even know who the they they had it's hard for us to imagine you don't know who Cary Grant or um, Irene Dunn or Katherine right. Hepburn is but uh, you know Roz Russell but you know these folks they knew all the people and they were really able to uh, participate enthusiastically. So how many years have you been involved in the in having I know you've been teaching a long time yeah. but how many years have you been having uh, folks sit in on the class? Oh gosh classes? probably since the beginning um, you okay. know there'd be one or two and then uh, when I was I taught some writing classes as well and that always seems to draw people um, uh -huh. a lot of people want to write memoir and stuff like that so um, that was something initially that I was surprised at how many older students I got and delighted. Mm -hmm. And I think you've been known to bring a pet now and then too. I do. Occasionally I bring one of my dogs. Um, <laughs> most recently it's, it's Finn, my Irish wolfhound, and uh, he does like to attend class. He's, um, sometimes I let him lecture. <laughs> Okay, so, and I know I've seen you with kazoos. Do the seniors participate in the kazoo? Yes, Petey and Jane Horn, uh, Petey Dodrell and Jane Horn were marching, we were marching around doing uh, the, the fight song for, for homecoming, and uh, Petey and Jane were marching right with us, and we went all over the campus, so um, they were huffing and puffing on those kazoos. They were quite good, I have to say. I think I was serenaded during the yes, process. We, yes, so. we, uh, we made sure that you, <laughs> you got the benefit of some of this. <laughs> And Marge, I guess, what has been your favorite experience uh, in terms of being involved in some way as a, as a graduate of the institution? What's a, one that stands out in your mind? Well, I think one of the most fun was uh, the year that I was asked to be the cardinal for the alumni <laughs> band. And as you know, the outfit is designed for a thin man about six <laughs> foot tall. And so it was an experience. <laughs> and that's when we used to march from the creek all the way up the hill. And uh, by the time I got to Church of the Master, I could barely breathe. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, what I know you mentioned Dean Van kind of inspired you or charged you with responsibility yes. for this. But um, in terms of obviously the institution benefits, what benefits do you derive from this? Kind of involvement. I think one of the exciting things is to see people come on campus, uh, it, whether it's in the library or into Battelle or Cowan, that uh, are coming for the first time. And the community people, uh, as well as people who come back to events uh, that have not been here since they graduated, mm -hmm. which I can't fathom. Mm -hmm but uh, to come and to see the changes that are taking place and want to come back to their reunion. And I know you're very active in the, in the Friends of the Library. I know there's a, a great deal of fundraising that goes on with that. What kinds of benefits has the institution seen from the, some of that fundraising? Well, our whole purpose is to help preserve the heritage of the whole institution. And so we do raise money 
And uh, just recently, we had a historian on campus about the Underground Railroad and its impact on this area. And people can be on campus for four years and maybe not realize right. that this was the home, really, of part of the Underground Railroad. So it's exciting to bring things in mm -hmm. that students and the community wouldn't see otherwise. Right. Candy, we should, probably should tell people a little bit about um, how they could get involved in the senior program. How does that work? Um, it, I think all they need to do is go to the registrar and just simply say that they want to, uh, I usually get some kind of note from Don Foster that says, do you have room in your mm -hmm. class? And um, usually if I don't have room, I just hang them on a hook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they, they, they uh, it's, it's very simple and you just, you just need to call and if, you know, if somebody doesn't know, they'll point you to the right mm -hmm. place. Okay. That's one of the great things about Otterbein. And you're very mm -hmm. open to this. You I enjoy am, it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I enjoy it. I have a great time. <laughs> so do you think that individuals should look at a particular course of interest before they if um, if I think they should just pursue anything they're interested in, okay. and and a good many people do like to read and their book club, so I think a lot of times literature is you know a right. natural extension or films or writing, um, but I'm, you know there's a lot of folks interested in history, and I'm right. you know I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's somebody interested in mathematics. Yeah, the faculty member who mentioned this was, um, she teaches in Asian mm -hmm. history, and she said that whenever they're dealing with um, something that's topical that people might remember or, or sure. have mm -hmm. uh, recollection or, or family members who are involved in, it really raises the level of interest. And Marge, on your front, if, a, mm -hmm. if an alum or a friend of the institution wants to get involved in something like Friends of the Library or some of these other activities, Cardinal Migration, whatever, what would you recommend? How would they get started? Well, they would be welcomed. And at the library, uh, our Lois Sudi, the director of the library, would just take their name and we would get right to them. And there's always a lot to do. The Cardinal Migration, I would recommend for anybody in the Otterbein family. And to, uh, to come and meet people, just contact uh, Becky Smith in the alumni office, get on the list. But there are so many ways that you could become involved as a community member, an alum. Just step forward, put your hand up. So what's next on your list? Oh my. <laughs> well, I think that I have volunteered to help at the next 50th reunion. Ah. So uh, my class is two more years before mine, and I'm coming to watch, see how it goes, see what I can learn, and also meet and greet. Very good. Well, well, we look forward to having more students in your classes. Good. Um, and I think also, um, I think there are still probably some faculty who don't know about this program, um, but um, but the idea of engaging uh, different, uh, a more diverse audience in the classroom and the discussion and so forth can be very helpful, as you've kind of laid out. And they're also they bring a lot of fun and and they do. Uh, yeah to the classroom. And Marge, again, thank you for all the service that you provided uh, to the Otterbein community and to uh, the activities, the fundraising, all of the ways in which you've contributed. We really appreciate it and hope that you've encouraged some more alumni to get involved. So Well, they're welcomed. Very good. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Well, welcome to the second half of today's Otterbein Spotlight. Um, as I said earlier, uh, today we're talking about the way in which the uh, alumni of Otterbein and also our friends from outside the institution are engaged in the life of our students, the life of our community, the life of Otterbein University, and the way in which they bridge generation gaps and community, uh, the relationship between the, the university and the community and so forth. So um, for the second um, part of our show, I have three guests with me. Um, to my left is Chuck Erickson. Chuck is a 1976 graduate, and Chuck serves on Alumni Council and does a lot of other things. Um, he and his wife moved back here just maybe three years ago? Two years ago. Three right. years ago and um, moved back intentionally to be, uh, come more closely associated with the Autobahn community. And they're sort of my next door neighbors almost. almost. So anyway, <laughs> um, has been a great citizen of the, of the community and, and, he, and he and Paula, his wife, have gotten very involved. And to his left is Margaret Dune. Margaret um, has two undergraduate degrees. Uh, from Otterbein, so she's a, a, a repeat customer, we'll say, <laughs> yes. um, and, and got a good education twice around, and we'll talk a little bit about why she decided to do that. 
And then um, to my far left, um, next to, to Margaret, is Bruce McNichol. And Bruce is director of We Connect, um, the Otterbein, the, I'm sorry, the Westerville Data Center, which opened just a year and a half ago, two years ago? Uh, March 8th, 2012. Okay, so very happy to have you here. So he's going to talk a little bit about the way in which community um, opportunities create internships for our students. So um, I'll start, uh, Chuck, with you since uh, you're right here. So um, I know you're involved in Alumni Council. You might talk about why you decided to do that. Let's kick off with that. So you got an invitation to join. What made you decide to join the Alumni Council? Well, I'd been a consumer, uh -huh. an alumni <laughs> consumer, and uh, had been going to uh, the Homecoming and the Founders Day and, of course, the top caliber music and theater. And uh, when Becky Smith approached me to be on the, the inside, I mm -hmm. thought it would be very interesting to understand a little bit more uh, about what's going on on campus mm -hmm. and uh, how we can engage alumni more. So that seemed like a very interesting uh, thing to embark on. Well, and we're really happy to have you. I guess um, I wanted to spin the clock back a little bit when you and Paula were talking about um, coming back to Westerville, the possibility of coming back to Westerville. Um, was that, I guess, just talk us through how that decision, I mean, what role did Otterbein play in that process? Uh, at first, uh, we were just coming back to Ohio. That's uh -huh. where uh, wife's family was. And we had always talked about when it was time to transition out of work, it would be nice to go to a uh, small college town and take advantage of all the cultural things and arts and uh, sports. And uh, so we started looking around, uh, but we always kept coming back to Westerville. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just seemed to, uh, it had changed from uh, in the mid 70s, but it still had that feel uh, that it was warm and welcoming, and uh, again, I guess uh, our uh, our assessment was correct because soon after we moved here, Money Magazine uh, right. put it in as far as one <laughs> of the top uh, cities in the country to live. And then, just recently, uh, Otterbein, or excuse me, Westerville was uh, uh, noted as being one of the most friendliest towns in the United States. And each time, uh, the college was referenced as right. a uh, great asset in in each of those. Uh, distinctions. Well, again, we're glad glad you made the move back. But um, we do, again, we do have a nice relationship with City of Westerville and that environment that characterizes both, I think, about being high quality of life and friendly really fit both of us. So it's a great match. So, well, welcome back and we're Thank happy you. to have you. So, Margaret, um, tell us about those two degrees. What made you decide to, um, I, I, won't, I won't give years here, I, I shouldn't have started with that, so <laughs> I'm not going to do years anymore. But um, when you first graduated, you entered what career? I was an elementary school teacher. Okay. I had a BA uh, with a French field of concentration. And, or excuse me, it was a BS then. Um, when my daughter was born, I uh, went to a class in another college. It was one night a week to be with other adults. Uh -huh and took an accounting class and fell in love with accounting and took another class and decided I really wanted to make a career change. So I looked at that college, I looked at Otterbein and really felt Otterbein had, again, the better program. So I came back as an, what they called at that time an adult degree program and took a combination of day and evening classes. Mm -hmm. And then you completed another degree. Yes, I have a BS in accounting. Oh, great. Well, that's great. Well, so you have been really involved in the Otterbein Women's Club. That's been a real focus for you. So what is the Otterbein Women's Club? Explain okay. that. The Otterbein Women's Club is not just limited to alumni. It's for men and women who um, are interested in promoting Otterbein, especially in, in our fundraising. We, we really only have two meetings a, week, a year. One is about the, something on campus or about the college to, to keep us involved with what's there. The second is to honor our scholarship awardees. And we do provide six, seven scholarships for Otterbein students. Um, that fund, it, plus we have paid for many things like the, in the nursing, it's the uh, lab. We paid for that. We've we right. paid for a paddock at the equine center. So we're involved in the capital projects as well. Um, <clears throat> the fundraising is done through the thrift shop. And that's a great partnership with the college as well because the college does provide the facility, the utilities. The club provides the volunteers, and the community provides the items that are, are for sale. Um, 
so all the sales, the proceeds from all the sales at the end of the year are given back to the college to be distributed among our scholarships or if we have a pledge for a capital project. If we do have excess items, maybe more in one area that we can sell, we do also share with the um, Methodist Free Store and a, um, another church-related um, facility in Southern Ohio. So all the items are either sold here locally or then further donated to where there is need. Now I know it fluctuates from time to time, but mm. sort of on average, how many, mm. women are, how many women and men are involved mm. in the, in the uh, thrift shop? In the thrift shop, um, I would say there are probably a, a core of 20 volunteers. They're only open Mondays and a part day fr Saturday, which is about what they can fill. And then people do go in through the week because people do leave donations on the back right. porch. So we have people that go in during the day and bring those into the house. And in case we have any students participating as viewers today, we might just note that I think we've had a number of students out actually outfitted for interviews and yes. parties and Halloween and yes. all kinds of things by shopping at the thrift shop. Well, and even things for their, their dorm rooms or, or their apartments, um, they come in and um, can find just those kinds of things. And all of that feeds back into student scholarships and support for capital And we projects. also have had some student volunteers that have come in to help, too. Oh, great. I didn't so, even know that. That's great. Yes. So, well, great. Well, thank you. Well, Bruce, let's talk about internships and WeConnect. So, first of all, for our audience, what is WeConnect? WeConnect is a public-private partnership between the city of Westerville and Data Recovery Service, a technology company based in Youngstown, Ohio. The city consolidated all its data needs into a computer center, basically, built their own computer center. And in doing so, the city owns all the right of ways, so they put fiber throughout the city and built their own network and did a lot of cost savings. But it also allowed them to bring a IT infrastructure into the community as basically a third utility. Um, as far as the interns, uh, we have all kinds of help, uh, needs to everything from mapping fibers, the helping install customers' equipment. You know, it's a very intensive program, I think, for an intern because it's pretty demanding. They have, um, they will do everything from G GPS mapping of the fiber network to helping install all the computer networks in the customer sites. So these might be um, students who have a background in computer science. It might be students interested in business marketing. It might be students interested in GPS kind of systems. Those, all those kinds of opportunities would exist. I think it covers a, a pretty wide gamut because it also shows how they could form you know, even the public-private relationship okay. and how the city is actually using this center to attract like a, economic development. Uh, so it, it goes everything from an IT in up to really business development in a community. Right, and, and you were saying that um, a number of new companies are interested in moving to town because well, of... building this, they have actually attracted businesses because when they're doing site selections, one of the things companies look at is the quality of life because Westerville is such a nice place to live. Right. Also, one of their items is the IT infrastructure. How do we get to the internet because it's such an important part of business now. Right. And being directly connected on fiber to the internet is a great asset for the city to have and for the business. So do you live in Westerville now? I am moving to Westerville. Actually, I just sold my farm outside of Gambier. Uh -huh. I'm living in the back of my son's house. <laughs> so we, we are still friends for now. <laughs> but yes, we do need to move, and we are going to be moving to Westerville. Well, again, we're very, very happy to have you in town. And, and again, for um, individuals who've watched this series of programs, we talk a lot about the experiential learning opportunities for students. And of course, internships are a major component of that experiential learning opportunity. So we'll be pushing some more students your way. We'll get that out there. So. You I'm might say to. now, I, in case we do run out of time, you might just say um, how students can find out about opportunities that the, we can The data center is kind of hidden. It's behind the, the Otterbein radio station. So we're kind of back there. It looks like a big bunker. But they, the easiest way to get in contact with us is if they go to our website, which is connect, www.connectionsmadehere.com. Dot com and just put a request in and we and I will actually call you back. Very good. 
All right. Well, great. Well, we, we will look for more students to be, I mean, it's right there with communication and art. It's, it's very accessible, right, uh, really, as campus. part of our campus. So um, it's really a great opportunity for students. So, all right. So um, let me come back to um, Chuck for a moment, because I wanted to talk about another aspect of the community and the way in which our alumni are involved. And I know you're a regular at the spaghetti dinners, which have become very popular with our, especially our off-campus students and the late night breakfasts. Talk about that program a little bit with Church of the Master and, and your involvement. Uh, well, Church of the Master has uh, very much an interest being right on campus uh, uh, to be very much involved with the students. And uh, I think back in the late 80s, the uh, congregation decided that they would start a spaghetti dinner. Uh, at that time, it was once a quarter. Now it's once a semester. But right. uh, we, uh, we serve uh, approximately six to 700 students on a designated uh, Tuesday of uh, each uh, semester. Some of them repeatedly, I think. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very they good They come food. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they come. And then um, just before finals, uh, for a number of years, uh, they've started a uh, pancake uh, dinner or study break. And uh, so again, the congregation uh, uh, provides as many pancakes and sausages as uh, the students can eat. And so it gives them an opportunity to uh, just take a break from studies and yet continues our relationship with studies, uh, with, excuse me, with the students in that uh, the church also does other activities and, right. and offers uh, both uh, uh, opportunities for classes uh, to hold uh, uh, practice uh, in our right. sanctuary with the organ and uh, just some other ongoing relationships with students. So clearly there are a couple of ways this ties into Otterbein today. I mean, one of the examples that you're giving us is that um, that idea of service to others. You're demonstrating that through um, the, the programs at the church and so forth. Um, but as an alum, does it help you feel connected to students too? You're breaking bread together, you're serving them, you're working with them, you're talking with them. Right, and uh, a after a, a couple times you begin to recognize people, uh, you get kind of a relationship. Uh, you can see them sometimes on Sundays, uh, sometimes around campus uh, at different events, and there is that Kind of facial recognition, and right. uh, and uh, you do get a, a a closer relationship with the students. And Margaret, how about from your perspective through the the thrift shop and your activities? Do you feel and the student scholarships? Obviously, you're serving mm -hmm. students in in all kinds of ways that are very meaningful mm -hmm. to them. So, do you feel when the students come back? Do you feel a sense of connection? Do you feel like that Otterbein spirit is still there? Actually, that was one of the joys of working in the thrift shop when the students did come in because we could engage them in conversation and get a really good feel on what their life on campus was like at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and Bruce, I know you have a, an Otterbein, one Otterbein student now? We had one last year. Oh, and that, you no longer have one. Well, a lot of our outside plant and construction work is starting now in the okay. spring because we do a lot of outside work as well. So now as we are looking at very hardly for, they'll get new interns for this year. Oh, okay, so you're looking now. Yes. So did that one student connect with you? Oh, yeah, see, so there's a, a very talented young man. I mean, he did a great job. Uh, I think he'll do very well in life. Okay. I mean, he accepted all the tasks given him, you know, very you know, straightforward and got the job done. And that was when things were just getting underway, so. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of chaotic, too, because we were both learning how to operate with the city, and the city was learning how to operate with us, so yeah, but I think things have smoothed out very well now. Well, okay, very good. Well, again, we'll be sending more students. And Chuck, I know you have, uh, one of your children is an Otterbein grad. Right, uh, when it was uh, time to look around for schools, uh, the criteria was anywhere in the United States. <laughs> and. Uh, but uh, again, the pull was to come back uh, to be close to family and uh, a small liberal arts college that uh, had that family feel. So uh, my daughter uh, chose Otterbein and graduated in 08. And she is now? Uh, she's now a uh, teacher with the local school district and uh, recently a, uh, a mom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to have the family at least part of the family, most of the family connected here back right. in, in Westerville at Otterbein. Right. So, um, Margaret, anything else on, uh, from your perspective in terms of ways that you could suggest to other alumni about getting involved? Well, I think that the, the biggest way is, is for alumni who are involved right now is to invite their friends to become involved. That is how I became involved. My college roommate was president of the Westerville Otterbein Women's Club at that time. That's how I got started. So. 
Um, again, there are lots of ways to be involved, so those who are should reach out to others and bring them in. Great. Well, well, thank you all uh, so much for joining us today and talking about alumni engagement, and thank you to our audience members for joining us today on Autobahn Spotlight. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.